Hello, we're we are starting the Conservation Commission Subcommittee on Land Management meeting regularly scheduled and announced. And we're going to continue our discussion about our agricultural policy led by Bruce Stedman. We also have uh, Michelle Lobb with us and Aaron Jock, staff of the town of Amherst. And we're expecting Dave Zomack uh, to join pretty soon. But we're going to start right now on where we left off because Bruce has one half hour with us. So we'll try and plug along. Go ahead, Bruce. Okay, so the places, this is draft 14. The sections in yellow are the new things that either we didn't get a chance to talk to before or that I've added. And as you see at the top of the header, it says May 27th BJS. So that's the last time I did editing and engagement uh, with it. So, um, yeah, that's helpful, Aaron. Thank you. So can you make it slightly bigger? There, okay. So I believe that um, Michelle added this idea as an objective in the past. Uh, scrolling down, I just want to show you the places where there's things to, to work on. So um, with regard to the Hammers residents, uh, Dave was going to talk to the town attorney. The town attorney was out for several weeks uh, for some reason. So it's going to take a little more time to address that particular one. Um, Bruce? Yeah. Uh, he actually addressed that. And the town attorney said, of course, Amherst residents would have a uh, preference because they pay for the land. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. So, uh, it was verbal. <laughs> oh, okay. Dave's um, with us, but uh, no need to repeat. Yeah, that's what he said. Okay. So, this is okay by the, the town attorney. Okay. Um, the up above, it shows a yellow potential for tribal and subsistence use. Uh, Michelle said, I asked for that. Um, Alex sent some materials for us to look at. If, if you've had a chance to read them and you want to talk about it after I've left, then please do that because I have not had a chance to look at it. Um, with regard to non-lethal, um, I said, well, what do we do if this fails? Alex noted that it creates a cone of, of de what is it? depression. <laughs> if you take some animals out, then other ones come in. So I, I'm not sure what to do with that. Uh, scrolling down, there aren't too many. I, we're not gonna, it's not gonna take very long. Just, so, um, I think that what Alex said makes sense in number D, letter D, that we might um, remove this uh, sentence. Licenses may also be renewed because it doesn't, it puts the commission in an awkward position. And it, it, at some level, we have that right anyway. Could I just jump in here? I think um, <clears throat> this was supposed to be um, revoked, revoked, not yeah. renew. Um, it was a, just a typo. I think we've license. gone over. I think we've gone over this. No, I'm sorry. I I believe that I caught everything. So obviously I haven't. Okay. Yeah, because I remember Aaron making that same comment. You want to keep the sentence as it is with the word revoke. Yes. Okay. For good cause. Yep. Okay. Um. So, uh, Dave has proposed that in E it be kept um, as it is, that separate accounts um, are not really possible. And the language, I'm sorry, in F, and then E, this was the language that Erin gave me based on her discussion, I think, with the town attorney. Um. Hmm. 
We actually on F, we made a request um, and we talked about this. We made a request to Dave to um, see if we couldn't have an amendment. There is already a special account for something. I've forgotten what it was. And um, there was a request made to Dave to see if we couldn't broaden that special account for uh, all things conservation land. Um, maybe it was in lieu fees for which there was a special account. I don't know. I'd have to ask Dave. But there was a request to broaden that so that agricultural fees and whatnot could be put into it so that, that those monies are available to be spent on conservation land. And Dave was going to. Yeah, let me let me resend that. It's budget season, but I think the worst has passed here in terms of budget prep. And it may have gotten a little lost in the in the email abyss with the with the, the accounting folks. But I'll send that to our accounting folks again, they have just been up to their eyeballs in preparing the budget and defending the budget. So let me resend that and see if there's a way for there to be a separate fee that would include that would include fees for uh, licenses as well as community garden um, fees. And in lieu fees, if, if, the, if the account is already set up for in lieu fees, and that's important because we tell people the in lieu fee will be spent on a Yeah, project. that that account is already set up. Um, in lieu, I think, is a little bit different category for it is quite a different category for the accounting folks. But let me let me ding them again and see. Okay, so while you're doing that, maybe we can move on because Bruce only has a. Well, I just want to point out at the bottom of all these things where it says Bruce Devman, and then it says DZ. In my conversation with Dave, I believe Dave, I got it correct. You said that a sliding scale is possible, and that 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 might be a factor in all of this somehow. A uh, sliding scale for well, the, 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 idea, the idea was that there the community gardens have one fee, and maybe the licenses have a different fee. And in some towns, if they're doing just great uh, hay, it's one thing. And if they're doing vegetables, it's a different thing. I mean, you, you know, the, com the commission can set that. The commission well, can set those fees. So I guess I just, I just worry a little bit about every different thing is a different conversation, a different change, a different email, you know, I understand. Like standardization I, I guess, uh, would be great. All right. Um, so I well, think it would help us if, if Dave and Aaron could make a proposal about the fees and say, this is what would work best for the town and our budget and, and just get us to fine tune and a, a, a proposition. Michelle. Right. Um, I see. I'm. I guess I'm moving on to the community garden fees. So I'm. I'm reading Alex your comment. Can we just say fees for the community garden are described in the community garden information page so that there's it doesn't need to be updated every time the other one's updated and we just refer to that since it's sort of a standalone program anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think we tried to rip community gardens out of here, except to refer to them as a separate policy matter. Okay, I'll put that in. Uh, Aaron, can you scroll down? All right, so I've reached out to UMass uh, Agricultural Extension. I've talked to two different people so far. Still haven't found the exact person uh, that will be the most helpful, but the objective is to get them to help me um, with definitional things when in the glossary about what constitutes best management practices for things like no kill and other stuff like that. So I'm working on that. I'm sorry it's taking so long, but they're not calling me back very quickly. So there's an extension guy in the, I've forgotten, the, you know, the wildlife resources department, they have a different name now, but and I can't remember his name, but he's very helpful. Maybe I could just okay. if, yeah, if you can send you his name. That'd be helpful. Aaron, thank you. Moving on. So at the very bottom of page four, it just notes that there is a glossary 
and we're going to put things that are too detailed for this document in there. Um, the equipment left overnight, it came from the building inspector, I believe. No, it came from me. Okay. Well, whoever, it's new, it's just new language. Yeah, I think we're. Okay. Not new. We're. Okay. It's, it is, I will take the yellow out. Um, moving on. What, what is Q? I'm sorry. What are we trying to achieve in Q? No equipment no, that, shall be that, stored on the units per minute. Equipment left overnight while in use is not considered storage. Yeah, if a guy's plowing his field and it's time to go home, but he's not done, leave the thing there and pick up tomorrow. He doesn't have to bring it home. Yeah, no, I I I see the practicality of it. Um, yeah, the. The challenge for the town will be um, vandalism. So, is that a challenge for the town or the owner? A little of both. We'll, so, we'll we'll have to see. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I know, like for land use applications, we require the the um, insurance policy. So, I'm presumably the the lessee will have an insurance policy. So if their equipment was damaged, then they it should be covered by their insurance. Yeah, we may just want to make that clear in the insurance because the insurance typically is for liability, like personal injury and things like that. But it probably should include, um, you know, uh, uh, property, their mm -hmm. property. So, the, you know, they leave a $60,000 tractor and somebody mm -hmm. does sure. something to it. The town doesn't want to be liable for that. Yeah. Okay, so that's handled under insurance, but equipment left over. I mean, it's obvious. I think Q is up to the whoever owns the equipment. I mean, he, mm -hmm. you know, not our business. Yeah, I don't know except if we want to except from an insurance standpoint. Yeah, you could add equipment left overnight. Uh, equipment left overnight while in use is not considered storage, and is at the whatever um, risk of the owner. Exactly. Yeah, just to have it in there. Yeah, it's who's got power of the pen here? Okay, with regard to the um, enforcement says uh, issues should be reported to conservation staff. It's on the top of page five. Um, my idea was to try to have a set of steps that people could go through, should go through. Um, I haven't ever ended up talking with Grow Ford Food Northampton. Um, I could keep trying to get around to that, but I guess the question is, how much detail is this particular issue? How much is involved in having it in this document? I mean, there could be a whole conflict resolution process, but we don't necessarily need it here. Ah. <laughs> First, we need a DC. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm I'm at the point where I'm pretty ready to wrap this up by the next meeting and allow the larger commission to read to read it in the context of everything else or by itself, because they're going to say, well, what about this and what about that? And then there's going to be additional um, time and re uh, research that may be needed. So I'm. Yeah, I mean, well, I think we're getting a little deep in the weeds on this, and I I sort okay. of feel like we'll it will cross the bridge when we come to it. Like if it gets reported to us, the the staff can try to work with the. Well, that would be my preference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. All right. Uh, section U, I just showed the cross out because you had agreed to crossing it out previously. Um, just wanted to make sure I should take it out for, for real now. Okay, the, the probably the most of now, so the, I'm going to work on the appendices and the glossary separate. I think we could let the commission read the, the, the document without having those completely done. But I do want to review this waiver of modif uh, modification. 
Um, Dave and I talked about it for a while and felt that it should be removed. Um, I remember this. Yeah. yeah. It was agreed. Sorry? I remember this discussion. I think we've gone all through this before. Okay. I'm just double checking before we take it out. I'll wait to hear confirmation from Dave and Michelle has her hand up. Go ahead, Michelle. It's it's not about this. So if you want to finish this discussion. Okay. I hearing no disagreement, I'm gonna take it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um my I just want to comment on Z. The glyphosate based herbicide shall not be applied to conservation land. We already described that the farming practices should be in compliance with um, organic standards. And I think that statement is kind of broader to the land management of conservation lands. But also, I don't think that we should preclude glyphosate because it's a pretty standard restoration tool. And it's that, I don't know, it's just a very specific statement um, that's not necessarily, like a farmer's not going to use glyphosate if they can't based on their um, organic standards. I just, I think we should remove it and keep what's prior to it, which already precludes it. Yeah, so Roundup is a glyphosate. Yeah, but glyphosate-based herbicides also have many different um there, there's a lot of different versions of them and some of them are wetland safe and and they're they're basically the most uh useful tool for like removing invasive infestations from wetlands and I mean that that is the tool that restoration ecologists use so if the I mean they probably already did it in the Fort River um that buffer strip it was probably a glyphosate project I don't know Dave maybe but I just don't think we need to remove it. And if if policy changes around it, then it won't be antiquated, antiquated, antiquated. Well, I agree with Michelle in the sense that it's replying to all the conservation land, which maybe it's too hidden. If if it should be used at all, it should be in a more generalized place and not a buried in this agricultural document. Well, it doesn't it doesn't harm things to to be repetitive. Um, not as a habit, but this is a big topic. And it, if a farmer is going to look at this, he's not going to look around at other parts of the policy. If it's well, a, that's fair. If it's yeah, but the management plan is going to specify the herbicides and pesticides used, so that would be included. And I mean, everything proceeding in that, per, I'm it disallows the use of glyphosate. So. If they were using glyphosate, there would have been already some approval of it in the management plan that they provide, and it would already have been um, not allowed by Z prior to that statement. And I also just don't think that we should not allow glyphosate on conservation land. Like it very much limits restoration efforts to say no glyphosate based herbicides. Rodeo is the wetland safe herbicide they use all the time, and it's glyphosate based. And I'm not saying I like glyphosate. I'm just saying that's a really broad statement. And I just don't think it needs to be there. I think it's going to trip us up. I'm the one who suggested it be in there. I'm I'm not going to get in the way. Take it out. OK. All right, I'm done with my part for today. And except the going back to the top, Aaron. So, uh, yeah. we have, Michelle, we have, your hand's still up. You've got another question. No. So uh, I think Michelle offered the objective number four. And if there is any discussion about that as an objective. Yeah. I discovered that I have made some comments around the April 1 draft, which I never sent to Bruce. And I'm going to send them to them today. Okay. Um, and they they centered around the opening with goals, objectives, policies. And all I did was come at it from a planner standpoint, where a goal is is a stated desired condition, and then objectives are things we you do to achieve it. But that's kind of fine stuff. Okay. Bruce, are you saying, 
You're saying I I suggested that. That was my memory of it, but maybe somebody else did. It doesn't sound like something I'd say. So probably. okay, well, somebody did. And the question is, do we want to keep it or not? I don't quite know. I don't. I don't quite know what it means. Um, I I think it means that that the the larger community um, needs to accept and engage in the question of agriculture on conservation land. How would we do that? I don't know. I'm, let's we take it out if it's if it's too ambiguous. I think it it could wind up being a burden to staff who's already got lots of things to do. What are you gonna we're gonna have yeah. open meetings, pound meetings. I don't know. How do we do that? And I don't know. Let's take it out. Mm -hmm. Aaron, um, and then the other one is the broader discussion about you need to scroll down some more. There. Um other factors the commission shall consider in assessing the eligibility of a conservation parcel, and one of them is the potential for tribal or subsistence use. That was added. I believe Michelle added that. And then I believe Alex sent some documents for us to review, which I have not been able to do. So did Michelle. Alex, you sent additional documents? I sent a um, broad statement modeled after the university that all this is on unseated land okay but that's uh, not to do with the agricultural policy yeah um i i had provided and you know at some point when we want to discuss it further i have notes on how that might work but i think bruce this is sufficiently general that it it leaves okay. open the opportunity without requiring anything so okay then i will clean this up I gotta go, but I'll clean this up and send it out back out to you as draft, maybe draft 15, um, draft final or almost there or whatever the, <laughs> whatever the thing is. And when we're at a point where we want the commission to read it, I'll leave it to you to, to decide whether it's this by itself or now it waits for the bigger thing um, to put it into the bigger thing. I, I vote for this by itself just so people can, you know, not take off a little bit at a time, but I'm, I'm ready. fine with that. I'm ready for everyone to get it. I don't know mm -hmm. what else needs to be done. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I'll clean it up. I'll send it to all of you, and then Aaron and our chair can decide how to present it to the larger group. Good. Bruce, you. Can you, Bruce, before you run, can you just tell us how the fish migration is going? Is it uh, the shad have largely the, the shad have largely stopped? They've gone over the dam. Yep. Uh, there were about twenty or thirty thousand more this year than last year at this time. Um, mm -hmm. The stripers seem. It depends on which angle you talk to. The stripers have either gone home by going back down the river or they're hanging around in selected secret spots where only certain <laughs> anglers know where they are. Depends on who you ask. Um, the unfortunate part is that the herring have gone and gone to almost nothing. Mm. And that, as I understand it, Alice can correct me, is a function of bycatch in the macro fishery at the mouth. And the North Atlantic Fisheries Management Council is considering Amendment 10 which would move the boundary of avail, you know, the, the buffer out much further from the mouth and the commercial fisheries people are objecting to this amendment. So that's what I know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alex, for giving me those detailed charts. That's, it's interesting to show people out in the field. They appreciate that. Yes, the, 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 the things that Ken Sprinkle sends out. Yeah, it just shows lots of interesting smaller details further upstream, that kind of stuff. Yep. And so I believe, we, sorry, go ahead. Do we need this on the agenda for the next meeting or do, can we go directly to uh, the Conservation Commission? Do you want us oh. to come back to this committee? No, I, 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 I would say, let me clean it up and then let's just use it, even if there's one or two points that aren't done. Uh, I've been told that lamprey um, spawning and migrating, swirling around, um, is 
based on day length, not on temperature or any other things. And so Brian Yellen says, show up at Groff Park about two thirds of the way up the trail on June 1st, and you will see lots of swirling about of lampreys um, reproducing. We saw them at the uh, fishway yesterday. How and, did you get into the fishway? The interners that's open to the- Oh, um, I was at the Holyoke the one, it's closed. But anyway, I have to go. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. So you went to Turner's Falls? Yes. Yeah, on Fish Migration Day, they had a thing at Manham Dam. I think that's East Hampton. Okay. So um, we have some time. I would, I'm delighted that we're going to have something to come to the commission. Uh, and I'm happy to bring one item. It's a big one. But we also have forestry and there's a handful of other things. I need to figure out what to do with community gardens we actually don't have closure on that. We have what we wrote, we have what they put up on, on the web, and I'm happy to just adopt what they have on the web. It seems easier, um, but we don't have, and I never did get any comments from Stephanie. So I have the markups from our meeting. I just haven't had a chance to like go in and um, do the sort of track changes to the document you sent, Alex, but I'll, I will do that. And it's very simple. I mean, like two very minor modifications, but other than that, I think it was just like inserting a link. And then the only other thing was, um, I think, and it was kind of a back and forth on the fees, but they're handling it as a donation because I guess it became a really tough thing to call it a fee. Um, some people couldn't pay it. Um, some people sent checks and they bounced and they, like it turned into like a kind of a major administrative hassle for. And Dave, Dave also said there's different sets of rules for the, for the two, each garden has a different set of rules, which right. makes right. it even more complicated. Right. It would be, it would be nice if there was one set of rules and, and a place to post them. There is a place at Amethyst Brook. There's now also a kiosk at um, at the other place, so at Fort River. So there's a place to post them. So we got a little bit of work to do to just pull that together. And I, I would prefer to have one set of rules. I have no idea what the differences are between Amethyst Brook and uh, Fort River. Yeah, I think it's. I think it'll be more clear once um, I mark up your document. But it's pr it's pretty straightforward. I think it's just all the rules apply for amethyst that are sort of in our standard rules, and then at Fort River Farm they have sort of a a very unique um, system that they use there, and so it's just a link linking them to that so that yeah, people I can understand. get yep. more. And um, Dave is working on the water problem in the in the. Uh, parking area mm -hmm. so that's a that's a whole separate thing mm -hmm. which doesn't have anything to do with our policy it's just a, a problem that he's working on so i i'm happy to go forward with the agriculture but at the same time i want to line up what comes next once they grapple with that and give it back to us then we can hand them another set mm -hmm. and um and move this along i our anniversary isn't that far away <laughs> I thought we'd be done in October. <laughs> you can laugh and say, yeah, but I've been down this road before. <laughs> so um, I'm happy to give time back. I don't have anything else except uh, when we meet next. Um, Dave Bruce has, I think there's a time when he's totally available again, and I don't have that on the top of my head. But um, I think we have some dates for next time, next couple of meetings. And I don't have them in my calendar correctly, or at least I'm not sure I have them correct. Aaron's the one who took what Bruce had available and it's something maybe if she doesn't have it now, she could just send it out to us to confirm. Yeah, when so th there was some dates that you had forwarded to me, Alex, um, that worked for Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, they were um, part of my email. 
Yeah. So if you want to catch up on that after the call, that's great. Yeah, I have it. Um, but there was, I was on at 1130 because that's what I had in my calendar. Bruce wasn't quite sure when this meeting started today. Um, oh, I see. That was an error on my part. I just kicked it to the next meeting and you guys wanted to bump it up to an earlier start. I couldn't have done it earlier anyways, but. Um, yeah. So we've got the 11th, 18th, 25th. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those those sound fine to me. Yeah, yeah they they fall. Um, the the um a couple of those are the day before concom -con meetings, which. Um, well, I think I think we fairly quickly get out of that awkward situation, and it's back to the way you wanted it. Okay. Every other week. Um. So that's every week then. For if we did that June 11th, 18th, and 25th, we'd be meeting once a week instead of twice a month. Is that what, was that just throwing out a bunch of dates for potential or do we want to meet once a week for those three weeks to try to make nice, some Nice headway? to get caught up if people could do it. But um, <clears throat> uh, with this agriculture thing going to the commission, uh, maybe we can move along on some of the other ones and get back to a, a more normal schedule. And would those all be 1130 to 1230 um, on those dates? Uh, I don't know quite when Bruce is done with his fish survey. I think uh, that's in his email. He says after such and such a date, I'm free. I think it just said July. We get our schedule back on track after July 1st. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he's made a request before on whether or not we can lengthen this meeting so we can get more done. And most of that hinges on Michelle's lunch. Not exactly my lunch, but more my job. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, if we did that, I'd like to have sort of a a special um, focus that, you know, like we are going to get through this today and talk about it um, just so, it, and I can't do it every week, but if, if it's warranted that we're going to, you know, get deep into a discussion on a particular policy and then, yeah, I'm up for that. Deeper than we get. Well, like once we have something that, you know, we have edits from several people and we're going to hash it out, that kind of thing, you know, not, um, yeah, okay. I, I can't, I can't commit to an hour and a half every week, every meeting, but, um, in some circumstances it might be warranted. So if we have like an upcoming, you know, whatever, we want to cover this and we think it's going to be an hour and a half, we could put that out and say, hey, June 15th, we think we need you for an hour and a half and you could kind of give us a thumbs up or, or down. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that would sounds be good. Fair. Alex can kind of have a, have a beat on that. So you don't take two hour lunches every day, Michelle? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky to get lunch. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure how we proceed. Do we... So I hear, I hear, you know, an hour and a half every once in a while on announcement or schedule an hour and a half and eliminate one when we don't have uh, enough meat to chew on. Could could I make a suggestion? Could we um, look at the charge really quickly and look at the if we're going to do three dates in June 11th, 18th and 25th? Maybe we could try to say on X day, we'll talk about this on X day, we'll talk about that. And then that might dictate how long the meeting mm. would need to be on that date. Yeah. I don't think we've got something as complex as agriculture and the other policies are, I think I'm hoping are a lot easier. And Bruce has done a terrific job, but it's taken us close to what, three months to get through it. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. There's go. a lot there. Um, so we've got agriculture um, sort of crossed off, which is number three. 
I know we had some climate resiliency recommendations and then the mowing schedule regime for early successional habitat. I've been doing some stuff behind the scenes on this. Um, so I have some land use maps which show um, there's there's some sets of maps that show um, the existing land use and also sort of biomap and HESP layers that could potentially could be taken into consideration. And then also I did a analysis to determine <clears throat> what our major land use categories are. <clears throat> so like deciduous forest, um, uh, um, evergreen forest, you know, open field, et cetera. So we'd have some sort of like larger statistical numbers to look at when we have that conversation. So those are a couple pieces of information that I've prepped for those two items. Mm -hmm. um, I know we did talk about conservation rules and regulations already. I think we made a pass or two through that and we may have gotten hung up on a few things. I think forestry was done, wasn't it? Yep. Um, so mm -hmm. forestry is done. Um, invasive species management. I think this one was the one that we got hung up on that we need to come back to, which is a larger discussion. We never started it. We put it off. Oh, we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we, um, we need to tackle it, but um, yeah. It's a, well, maybe maybe number seven is a is a long mm -hmm. is a long meeting once we've done a little yeah well yeah. each one of those could probably be a meeting i don't know about camping maybe camping's easy but dogs is a is a pretty good size issue i think dave has commented on that are you sure you want to open that can of worms well no. we're we're just opening it here with us right now and maybe we open it and then close it quickly again and say no <laughs> well the other the other piece of information that would be really useful for the dog discussion is that we just got our all of the results back on our open space and recreation plan survey which kind of quantifies in um like uh with you know, graphs of what the respondents hmm. said about Good idea. You know, particular uses. And I know dogs, there was specific questions about dogs on a couple of those. So that might be a place that we could also, you know, a, a piece of information we could utilize um, to make decisions or, you know, at least have hmm. conversations. I have written up some stuff on beavers. Michelle sent out a fact sheet on dogs. Um, I don't, I don't think we have anything We've had a discussion about camping. It used to be allowed, and then it wasn't. Um, we began a discussion about hunting. We keep bumping into signage as an issue. But uh, anyways, there's on those issues, we could probably fill a, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Can we couch seven and eight, perhaps? I, mean, I don't What else is compatible recreation uses? Does it? So this was a um, <laughs> another sort of can of worms discussion, which we've never even really come back to. But, um, you know, part of what stemmed this whole discussion was um, a, a camp, a, which was a, um, a after school camp, which started at Amethyst Brook. Um, and it, you know, pre-COVID, it was like an after school type program where kids came for an hour or two to use Amethyst Brook for this after school camp program during covid it sort of morphed into a full day program and that was uh, um unbeknownst to the conservation commission or the town at the time um and uh it was just a larger discussion about sort of um i guess other potential like besides agriculture there are other potential passive uses of the land which may come up in the future and that we may want to have a conversation about those in advance because if they do then we'll have the policy to lean on so if like somebody came to us and there was another situation where um uh a a private company wanted to charge a fee to to lead groups like on sweet alice for example and charge a nominal fee and um yeah. Can I jump in here? And I, I yeah. think, yeah, no, that could be an interesting conversation. Um, you know, in my mind, the question is, you know, do we come up with policy for everything under the sun? I can think of, you know, 
rubber duck races, weddings, um, you know, um, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, Cross country races, all these things mm -hmm. that have come up through the years, or do we handle those um, one, one by one when they come through the, um, you know, the, the application for use of conservation land. And, and again, you know, I'm, I'm open to having that conversation, but I, I agree with you. There's a lot of things that could come through that door if we, if, and they do, they, they come to us and say, Hey, can we do this? Or can we do that? Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. On number seven, I would also say camping could be a shorter conversation. I, I don't know. I don't see that as being as long as say beavers, dogs and hunting. And frankly, I, I think beavers could be, a short conversation if we get some agreement around, you know, kind of what are the threats to public safety and, and trails. So anyway, I don't mean to get into the details now, but. Well, what I put together for beavers has more to do with the basis under the law and delegation under that law. And I don't get into what you just mentioned, Dave. So we can I just request that um, as far as how the order that we do this, um, one, two, and six to me could be sort of a continuous conversation because they'll have lots of overlap so that when we do discuss them, maybe we could discuss them in sequence. Could mm -hmm. I suggest that we do one, two, and six and have an hour and a half session on the 18th? and then potentially do seven and eight and have an hour and a half session if needed on the 25th. If, if that works for Michelle. Um, you know, with regard to number two, I don't think we are gonna come up with a schedule. We would be looking to um, the town, you folks, to come up with a schedule and Bruce has this in his email that he just sent out as one of the questions. <clears throat> I think that's why in my mind, one and two are related because I maybe number two wasn't worded exactly right, but it's pretty easy to come up with a schedule based on, on grassland bird, migration and butterfly you know activity and 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 blooming of various you know plants and 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 flowers and whatnot it, but one and two in my mind are related to kind of how how much why are we mowing these areas why are we keeping them in early successional habitat and based on the maps that Aaron has put together we should look at those more closely because I think a lot of them are just historical uh, uh you know they're they're just the history of these being farm fields and they're kept open for a pastoral setting or whatever but you know is is that small field is that three and a half acre field off a of strong street really that important for early successional habitat i don't know i think it's a good question yeah i was thinking just what everybody said not necessarily the schedule but maybe identifying the sites that are priority mm. For yeah. the mowing and ones that are not, you know, that has practical practicalities with um, the land managers, but also, yeah, what Dave said, like what, where is the habitat, the quality habitat being provided that should be maintained absolutely and some that maybe don't need to be because mowing and, you know, that's a lot of emissions just to mow with those big mowers and that can you know, tie into the climate change. So um, just yep. anyway. That's how yeah, I'm and, thinking about it. No, I, I agree. And I think the work that Aaron has done will really shed some light for all of us on, you know, biomap and, and you know, all of the natural heritage layers and kind of say, oh, why, you know, should we be mowing, um, you know, Atkins Flats or, or Haskins Meadow or wherever, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, and I sort of had envisioned too that we might consider like, time of year restrictions for mowing on certain properties, particularly like if there's a, in a specific endangered species that we're aware of that might be active during a given season um, that mm -hmm. we would say, 
this specific property because of this specific reason, maybe no mowing between this date and this date. Um, type yeah. Of. Yeah. Aaron, before we have this meeting, are you, do you think you'd be ready to distribute that map to us? Just so. Yeah, I, could... I have them. Okay. I have awesome. them ready now. I have everything ready to share. Thank I just didn't want to like be too pushy um, <laughs> when we're on other sections and not ready to go to it yet. Great. Thanks for putting that together. Um, I'm not sure I can do an hour and a half on the 25th, but I can on the, what was the 18th? Okay. Sure. Let's... But you guys can go for it. <laughs> I so I can should, be there for an hour. Should I post it for an hour and a half? And then we'll just, if we finish early, we'll finish early. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I would do that. Then it was on people's calendars. Okay. <clears throat> and then Michelle put together some mapping type stuff, a table. And if if we're going to be looking at Aaron's maps, maybe we see if what Michelle provided is useful. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to actually look at that list. I hadn't looked at that list for a long time and say, okay, we completed this section. We completed, we're close on this section, you know, and we're check them off tick 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 and we'll yeah, get we've there. made a ton of progress it's just like we'll get, we get hung up on stuff you know for and a lot of a lot of meetings get canceled but i would love to be done before our anniversary what's that what's our anniversary yeah call it end of july oh um june Let's go 31st for 2024 <laughs> I, I think that's a worthy goal <laughs> June 30th, 2024. Yes. But if we needed to extend, if we can't, you know, if we if we end up feeling like we're this is too tight of a timetable, we can always extend the subcommittee for a period of time to wrap up sections. Sure. Yeah. Just don't give us too much extra time. We'll use it. <laughs> or we'll take it. <laughs> all right. Good. Is that all we have for today, Alex? I think so. Yeah. And then, so for the meeting on the 11th, what would you like to cover at that meeting specifically, Alex? Just because I've got the agenda for the 18th and the 25th, if we go on this discussion. Can you, can you bring up? Um... Sure. So I have number one, two, and six to be discussed on the 18th, seven and eight to be discussed on the 25th. Um, so that would leave four, that would be four. So the uh, rule, um, conservation land rules and regulations, I think is the only other remaining one. Yeah, so what we could do is is bring up the stuff we worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we do there with four? We've, we've already marked things that are complete. Yes. Um, so we look at the other parts of the document, is that what that would amount to? Um, I think we started marking it up and we just need to revisit where we let pick up where we left off on that. So we would be looking at everything except agriculture and except forestry and except community gardens. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yep. invasive management, that's that's a topic. All these are topics in the plan. Um, Bruce brought up some that aren't really on this list that I think we could discuss at least for a portion of the meeting. Yeah, I think it would it would be, you know, Bruce's comments or questions they weren't specific to any one subject. They were general. And um like assessing when do we visit conservation land. He had one on there about oh, that was, yeah. So maybe we could put that his questions also on the agenda for next time. Okay. So we're prompt in addressing them. And, okay. try and try and be try and be succinct. Okay, I can do that. All right. Well, that sounds like we got a plan. And I'll um, I'll go through the document and try and get a sense of what we've done and what we need to do and that kind of stuff. Um, and and you're tell me what date we were going to deal with beavers and uh, the subjects. Um, that would be the 25th of June. Okay, so that's beavers, dogs, and whatever the other mission statement is. 
And then what was the 11th? Um, the 11th will be the conservation land rules and regulations and then discussion of Bruce's questions. Yeah. I'm going to send, I'm going to spend the entire week prior to that. That'll be next week in Canada. And my time, my focus will be on other things. So I may not have time to prepare as well as I might for that. And I'm, I'm pretty busy this week preparing for next week. So, um, We'll do what we can unless we can slip something in there that's easier or doesn't require uh, as much preparation. Let me spend some time on it this week and I'll talk to Aaron. Sounds good. I will be able to attend the Conservation Commission meeting next week from Canada. Thanks, Alex. Are you working on uh, dam, other dam projects up there, Alex? We are holding an indigenous ceremony to celebrate the healing of the river, the daylighting of a set of falls, which is like a class two rapid, where they gathered to, to fish in the spring mm -hmm. uh, prior to contact. And um, let's see, celebrate the healing of the river, recovery of salmon falls, oh, and to welcome home the fish. And we'll have drumming and dancing, uh, prayers, and a thing oh. called the water ceremony, which we're going to only have it for a half hour. The water ceremony can go on for all day. Wow. We've and got which, which river is this again? St. Croix River. St. Croix. It is the border between Maine and New Brunswick up around Calais. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. So it has the largest potential in North America for raising herring. Hmm. It should be up around somewhere between 40 and 80 million spawners. So when we talk about, you know, herring not doing well at, on the Connecticut River, the water's still cold enough up there. We have the potential for that. And there's mm -hmm. a whole bay associated with the, the St. Croix is like a food spigot, like a water spigot, only it's a food spigot. So trillions of juvenile herring will come out of that river to feed the fisheries in the bay. Hmm. Right now, the food supply for those ground fisheries is to pauper it. So hmm. a lot of economies will benefit. And um, there's a lot of indigenous people that fish. They are, they are the Passamaquoddies that live there are a fish community. And um, so restoring the river fits with my agency's mission. That's, that's sort of getting the indigenous fish back up into the river, but also the giving back some of their culture by mm -hmm. opening up the river that was all dammed up in the 1800s. Seriously mm -hmm. polluted. It was so polluted a salmon fry couldn't live in the water. Mm -hmm. And now it's the Clean Water Act has done a lot to clean it up, but now we freed up nine miles of river to the next dam and we're putting in a lot of money, a lot of um, um infrastructure dollars from Congress are going in. It was Maine's number one place to spend infrastructure dollars was to improve the fish passage on that river. Hmm. So, and NOAA is one of the major funders. Sounds, like a, sounds like a very cool project. Oh, it's a very cool project. It's yeah. what's a bounce in my yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's not the Puffer Spawn Dam, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but it's it's big. <laughs> Yeah, it is big and it's, so it has <laughs> biological benefits it has indigenous benefits it's um it's it's um it's it doesn't happen every place it's really wonderful yeah work. no that sounds like a once in a lifetime project that's we had amazing. a discussion with them on whether or not they wanted this ceremony to be what i call big or small and they wanted it small meaning for us Mm -hmm. So there's a few people from outside their community who were invited that helped make it all happen. Mm -hmm. But they didn't go to U.S. senators and congressmen and governors and agency mm -hmm. heads and all that kind of stuff. They, It's for them. That sounds better, actually, instead of all yeah. the proclamations and suits and, you know, all that yep. stuff. Yeah. Yep. yep. So I put together the agenda. I'll be emceeing the event. And... Um, 
it'll be fun. It, it, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna serve lobster rolls, and, <laughs> and so they're buying the lobster from uh, indigenous lobstermen, and their whole staff is gonna spend Monday shucking the lobsters and preparing the lobster salad to go in the rolls. Right. They did. They wanted to do it themselves instead of hiring a caterer. Well, if my wife knew about this, she would be there because my wife Maria is all about lobster rolls. I am not a lobster guy, but uh, she loves it. So, well, lobsters are going their own way. Rhode Island has pretty much lost lost its lobster industry, um, and that area up around Bay of Fundy, Passamaquoddy Bay, is down about a third. Hmm. So they are being hit by the warming of the ocean and the lionfish and blue crab. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, thanks for the update. That sounds exciting and enjoy you, the fruits of your and many other people's labors. That's, that's a pretty, pretty cool project. Yeah. So hopefully uh, it's the beginning of one thing and the end of another. And for me, it's the end of, I think I retired five, seven years ago. So I've pretty much worked on that project for what, during my retirement without mm -hmm. pay mm -hmm. and uh, my workload will lessen once this event is over. I've still got some things to do, but mm -hmm. uh, time to free up some, some of my time to do other things. Sounds good. Well, okay. I've got to run. Um, hope, everybody, hope everybody yes. has a great week and we'll see you all soon. I need to ask I... if there's any public on. Oh, right. I forgot no. about that. Uh, no, public. No, no public. Okay, so we're going to close this meeting at 12.58, if that's okay with Michelle. Yep, sounds good. Okay, <laughs> Dave and Aaron. Okay, thank you yep. all. All right, all right. Have, have a great day, with you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.